Krishna. Om Ajnana Timirandarshya. Om Ajnana Timirandarshya. Yatan Jana Shalakaya. Shri Guru Vedamaka Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Vayam Rupa Kadamayam Tadanti Swapadanti Kam One Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padagamalam Krishna Bhagavan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Kobisha Kopika Kanta Tada Kanta Namushute Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Rade Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanushrutte Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanshakalpata Rubyasya Kirpa Sindhu Bhaevacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadathara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Ashwin, for reciting the Mangla Charan so beautifully. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Danvat Pranam, please accept Danvat. our obeisances on behalf of everybody who have joined this group and who are about to join Prabhuji. Prabhuji, we are reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. We are on Canto 1, Chapter 7, and Chapter 7 is called The Son of Group uh, Drona Punished. And today we are on Text 12, Prabhuji. I hand over to you. Okay, thank you. I'm Vilapanam Samstham Chapanuputranam Bakshaye Krishna Kato Dayam. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace. A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Chitrabhupad Chitrabhupad Jai. Sudhi Goswami thus addressed the Rishis, headed by Shavnath. Now I shall begin the transcendental narration of Lord Sri Krishna and topics of the birth, activities, and deliverance of King Parikshit, the sage among kings, as well as topics of the renunciation of the worldly order by the sons of Pandi. Brothers, you can read the purport. Purport by Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Lord Krishna is so kind to the fallen souls that he personally incarnates himself amongst the different kinds of living entities and takes part with them in daily activities. Any historical facts, old or new, which have a connection with the activities of the Lord is to be understood as a transcendental narration of the Lord. Without Krishna, all the supplementary literatures like the Puranas and the Mahabharata are simply stories of historical facts. But with Krishna, they become transcendental. And when we hear of them, we at once become transcendentally related with the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam is also a Purana. 
But the special significance of this Purana is that the activities of the Lord are central and not just supplementary historical facts. Srimad Bhagavatam is thus recommended by Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as the spotless Purana. There is a class of less intelligent devotees of the Bhagavata Purana who desire to relish at once the activities of the Lord narrated in the 10th canto without first understanding the primary cantos. They are under the false impression that the other cantos are not concerned with Krishna. And thus, more foolishly, they intelligently, they take to the reading of the 10th canto. These readers are specifically told herein that the other cantos of the Bhagavata are as important as the 10th canto. No one should try to go into the matters of the 10th canto without having thoroughly understood the purport of the other nine cantos. Krishna and his pure devotees, like the Pandavas, are on the same plane. Krishna is not without his devotees of all the rasas, and the pure devotees like the Pandavas are not without Krishna. The devotees and the Lord are interlinked and they cannot be separated. Therefore, talks about them are all Krishna Katha or topics of the Lord. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mother. So we are on text 12. I repeat the verse. Sutta Goswami does not as he wishes. Headed by Shona. Now I shall begin the transcendental narration of Sri Krishna. The topics of the birth activities and deliverance of the Pai The sage among kings as well as topics of the renunciation of the worldly order by the sons of Pandu. So now we find that Sutta Goswami has started addressing and he's going to speak of two topics from now onwards. Topics related to King Parikshit, his birth activities, and how he and Parikshit was delivered by hearing Bhagavatam. And also how the Pandavas retired from their kingly way of life and proceeded toward the Himalayas, giving everything up to their grandson, Maharaj Parikshit. Now, Prabhupada is explaining We'll go point by point. Sri Prabhupada explains that Krishna, out of kindness, appears among humans to show extraordinary pastimes which the human can relish and purify themselves to the extent that we return back to him. Now, whenever Krishna returns, whenever Krishna appears, you know, there's always a purpose. The purpose is given in the Bhagavad Gita. Paritnaya sadhanam vinashaya chatushritam dharma samstapana thaya sambhavami yuge yuge. So, Krishna comes to this planet for three purposes to protect his devotees, to punish the impious, and to re establish religious principle. Sri Prabhupada explains that of these three, the last one is most important he is to re establish religious principles. And to protect his glory. Now, how is how the devotees are protected? For example, right now, how are we protected? Krishna is not in front of us. Then who is in front of us? In front of us is Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita. Devotees, temples, deities, the holy name, and so many things. All these protect us. What protects a living entity or any devotee? is the glorious past tense of Krishna. Not just Krishna, but in all his comings, like Ramachandra, Lord Nashinda, Baban, Vara, and so on. As we hear the past times, our devotional service becomes rejuvenated. It's not that it's not there. We all have devotional service in our heart. The Chitin Chaturvind, it says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Bhakti Sadhya Kabunai Shravan Adi Suddha Chite Kari That one did not need to ask for the love of Krishna elsewhere. Krishna is already there in your heart. And by practicing devotional service, especially by hearing, 
श्रवण आदि शुद्ध चीते श्रवण में and so many times hearing is emphasized throughout bhagavatam and throughout bhagavad gita i think even last wednesday uh, last wednesday's class i i told you that we have to hear and hear even if we know you hear it again and again and you'd find that it becomes more fresher and fresher and fresher and we had already done this with shimata shu katha krishna punya shravana kirtana hrite yoshi suvabhadrani vidunati to hit the tongue. Krishna is a well-wisher in our heart. He purifies us when we hear about Krishna. So whenever Krishna comes, he does this uncommon pastimes. And simply by hearing them, a devotee's life goes very swiftly. And at the end of life, he goes back home, back to God. The Prabhupada says, anyone who does not hear about Krishna that means he, he, he does not know Krishna. It's only by hearing. And if you go to the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the opening verse, it says, if you want to be connected to me, then you have to hear about me. Shunu. Shunu means to hear. Same thing is repeated in chapter 9, the first verse. Krishna tells Arjuna that because you are not envious of me, I'll tell you things which are not, which is still better than what I've told you up to now. Again in the 10th chapter, Krishna emphasizes hearing. And again in the 13th chapter, repeatedly hearing about Krishna, about Krishna's pastime, it purifies us to an extent that we become attached to him. So all activities which are related to Krishna, they are all transcendental. I think everybody knows the word transcendental. Transcendental means about the three modes of nature. Three modes are goodness, passion, and ignorance. Transcendental means when you go beyond this, transcend them, that is called transcendental. Or in other words, absolute. Everything about Krishna is absolute. So if you hear anything, any story or any, any activity which is not connected to Krishna, it's just a story like a mundane story, in which you can't get any profit or gain anything in devotional service. We have so many stories. As you hear them, it leaves an impression to us. And that impression can last for years. We find that when you are in the schools, especially those who are learning English or any other language, they are told, OK, you should read some stories in English. And when we hear, read those stories, then we were like, we get some, what do you call it? Some impression of the story. Today, my granddaughter told me a story, which you might have heard it somewhere. She says, once there was a statue of a prince made of gold and a bird came flying there and it landed between the two legs of the, the statue. It was getting darker. And the bird was just seated there and the drops of water came on him and there was no rain. She was wondering, oh, where this water is coming from? So, and then he noticed that actually the statue was crying. It was that of a prince. So the bird goes to the prince, why are you crying? He says, my people are not happy. That's why I'm crying. And then he sends the bird to do, do some work. That go and give this, my jewel to this, my eyes to this. Beautiful story. And when you hear this story, the whole story means you should be very compassionate. So every story leaves a, an imprint in your mind. But imagine if you hear Srimad Bhagavatam, what will be the imprint? The Bhagavatam will bring Krishna to you, easiest way. You don't even need to read it, you just hear it. Right from the first candle, going upwards to the twelfth candle. As you hear and hear and hear, then the effect is so good that you can never forget Krishna. That's why it is said that as you hear about Krishna, you yourself become transcendental. You can overcome the three modes of nature. How? By engaging in devotional service. In order to transcend the three modes of nature, you have to engage in devotional service because devotional service itself is transcendental. All the nine limbs of devotional service are transcendental. Hearing, chanting, 
remembering, then worshiping, serving the lotus feet, worshiping the deity, then becoming friends, sorry, serving him, becoming friends, offering prayers and surrendering. All the nine of them are all transcendental. And actually none are, none are different from each other. Actually, they, they all are one, but it depends how you use it. For example, we all sometimes get tired of chanting continuously. So what do we do? We open a Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavad and we read, or we hear, and again, our spirit goes up. And sometimes by hearing for a long time, again, you get tired. So you can go and take some prasad or you take some rest. In this way, devotional service, all of the devotion, all the nine links of devotional services are very, very pure. So narration without Krishna is just a story. But the narration with Krishna will have the effect of bringing transcendence to you. And that is why Srimad Bhagavatam was written by Vyashtev, heard by Sukhdev Goswami, and Sukhdev Goswami is speaking to Maharaj Pariksha. And was being heard by Sutta Goswami, who is narrating to Shona Krishna. So in this way, I mean, the sages are Naimu Charanya. So Chitana Mahabhu calls Srimad Bhagavatam Amala Purana. Amala means it cannot be valued in the form of money or jewels. There is no real value. It is beyond the value of your imagination. That is the value of Srimad Bhagavatam. We can call it valueless. So expensive. Because each page, there's Krishna on each page. And as you hear and hear, then you become delivered. So Sri Prabhupada gives us a method of hearing that there are people who are unscriptious <coughs> to your readers of Bhagavatam. <coughs> they go, they jump straight to the tent canto and speak the pastimes of Krishna with the gopis and Radharani and other things. But that is not the way. It has to be read systematically. First canto, second canto, third canto, and so on till you enter the tenth canto. In another lecture, Sri Prabhupada says, Bhagavatam cannot be read in seven days. Impossible. It's a general custom. They made it a custom. It's not uh, recommended as Shastras. They call it Bhag Bhagavat Sapta. Because in seven days, Maharaj, what do you call it? Sukhdeva Goswami spoke to Pariksha, so they tried to imitate you. And they try to superficially teach you some things for Bhagavatam. What is the effect? The effect is no one becomes a devotee. Real Bhagavat Sapta is supposed to be Bhagavat Katha. Bhagavat Katha is meant to be read whole life, not for a few days. No one can claim that I know Bhagavatam from top to bottom. I have mastered it. If you have mastered it, and if you are not fully surrendered to Krishna, it means you are not learned Bhagavatam. You are not heard Bhagavatam. Just like Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, as you read and read, the apex verse of, of the Bhagavad Gita is Sarva Dharma Paritajya. It means surrender to me. So if you read Bhagavad Gita, if you are not surrendered to Krishna, it means you are not read Bhagavad Gita. And if you, read, if you are hearing Bhagavatam, it means you are already in devotion. service. This is the effect of hearing Bhagavatam. That's why Sri Chaitanya calls it Amala Purana. Amala means so pure, spotless. It has no, what you call it, nothing dark in it. And there is no teaching of Kaitav Dharma inside. Kaitav means no, no cheating inside. Yesterday in the morning we were reading, not yesterday, Tuesday. Uh, yeah, was it Tuesday? Yeah, yesterday was Tuesday. Uh, in the Bhagavatam class in the morning, it says Bhagavatam can only be understood by people who are nirmasara, no, who are not envious. Bhagavatam is meant for them. And it is even beyond the four purushatas. Four purushatas means four pillars of life. Dharma, artha, kama, moksha. Dharma means to live a religious life. Artha means to earn properly, honestly. Kama means to fulfill your desires. Moksha means, in that context, to merge into Brahma Jyoti. But Sri Prabhupada says, that is not real moksha. Real moksha means to surrender to the feet of Krishna. That is called real 
moksha. So, if one wants moksha, real moksha, means one has to surrender to Krishna. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Bhagavat Parigya Bhagavata Stane. You should hear Bhagavatam amongst the, the Bhagavats, means amongst devotees, not amongst ordinary people. Those who are not devotees, there's no point of discussing Bhagavatam. It doesn't make any sense to them. Unless they are honest at heart, the Bhagavatam is so powerful that it can cleanse the heart of even the first time, person who is hearing even the first time. But the advice given by Shichita Mahaprabhu is to discuss Bhagavan, Bhagavatam amongst the devotees. If you study Shichita Mahaprabhu's life and the general mass of people, you will only do Sankirtan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You'll preach, you'll, I'm sorry, you'll preach Krishna simply by Kirtan. You go out of the streets. We know that every day passed on Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's whole night they would have Kirtan at Shivash Pandit's house. And at six, it's called Prabhat, when the sun is just rising. They'll all come out of the house and do Nagar Kirtan and wake up everyone. Jiva Jago, Jiva Jago, Gora Chandra Wake up and hear the sublime name of love, Hari, means Krishna. But when he sat in the company of the devotees, you'd hear Bhagavatam, especially from Gadadhar Pandit. Gadadhar Pandit is a very expert. And we all know Gadadhar Pandit is a Shivadi Radharani, not such, appearing as the garb of a devotee. And when Gadadhar Pandit would read Bhagavatam, the tears would come out of his eyes. And a time came that all the writing disappeared. And till they had to get another Bhagavatam. This is when he became quite old. So the Bhagavatam is so sweet. It brings you ecstasy. It brings you tears in your eyes. All of you know that the pastime of Pudrika uh, Vidyanidhi. And once Mukund, Mukund is one of the principal devotees of Sri Chaitanya. His name is mentioned even in the Gora that uh, Mukunda uh, Gaya, he was a very good singer. And this Mukund once took Gadadhar Pandit to Pundrik Vidyanidhi. And Pundrik Vidyanidhi was an extremely rich person. Not only rich person, but he was a kind of a very aristocratic, aristocratic person. And he was wearing very expensive clothes, gold, je gold jewelry, eating pan. You know what is pan? What do you call it? Beetle nut. And it didn't look at all like a devotee. So the Dadar Pali is thinking in his mind, where is Mukund brought me to? Who is this person? Doesn't even look even like a devotee at all. And Mukund could understand his heart. So what did Mukund do? He took one verse of Bhagavatam. Aho Bhakiyam, it starts like that. I think it appears in the fifth canto. That Krishna is so merciful that when Putra went to kill him, by smearing poison on the breast, Krishna, he closed his eyes as if he's in fear and started drinking milk. And along with the milk, he also drank or he also sucked up the life of Putna who died. But after dying, where did Putna go? Then the Bhagavatam makes that was it is said that Krishna gave her a special place in Vaikunda, just like Mother Yashoda. Imagine she got a place like Mother Yashoda, because the intention was to feed milk to Krishna. So Krishna did not see the dark side. He only saw the bright side. So who can be more merciful than Krishna? Imagine someone came to kill you. Then <laughs> would you be kind to that person? No way. She had come to kill Krishna, but yet Krishna did not know. Because the intention was to feed Krishna. So he saw the good side. He did not consider the dark side. So upon hearing these words, Pundrik Vidyanadi, he started jumping and he went into a complete ecstasy for six hours, complete, continuously chanting Krishna, 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 Krishna. And the uh, tears were rolling from his eyes. The jewelry he was wearing was all broken. The hair became disheveled until he completely cooled down. But other people noticed. He looks a vishay. Vishay means 
person who is enjoying sense gratification, but my judgment was wrong. He's a pure devotee. And because he committed an offense. So what did he do? He said, I'm very guilty if I have uh, misjudged a person that actually is a pure devotee. So I'm going to take shelter of him. So he took initiation from Putrik the Gyanadi. So you can read this pastime. There's just one verse can bring about such a change in the lives of the hearts of the devotees. What to talk of the whole Bhagavatam. So Srimad Bhagavatam is very dear to the Vaishnavas. Vaishnav means devotees of Lord Vishnu. They all love Bhagavatam. It is their life and soul. In India, they call it classic. It's a classic classical scripture for all the devotees, especially those who are surrendered to Krishna. They they love this Bhagavatam like anything. And then, as you as I explained earlier, then all the activities of Krishna are sublime. Whether it is the birth, killing of the demons, dealing with the Pandavas, killing of Kamsa, his later pastime with the Pandavas, his pastime with the Gopi, all are transcendental. You cannot say that just Rasada is transcendental. Every activity of Krishna is transcendental. As you hear, you become purified. So this is the beauty of Bhagavatam. And as you hear Bhagavatam, you'll get all kind of tastes. Just like if there's a buffet dinner. I think everybody knows what's a buffet dinner. We try to taste everything, isn't it? Let me taste this, let me taste this. But in Krishna, you get all the tastes. <laughs> Not in everyone else. <coughs> That's why in the nectar of devotion, in the very beginning, Krishna is called Akhil Rasa Amrita Murti. In Krishna, you find all the rasas, all the tastes. If you want Krishna as your master, you get it. If you want Krishna as your guru, you get it. If you want Krishna as your father, you get it. If you say Krishna is my brother, you can get it. You want Krishna as your lover, acceptable. Krishna is your husband, acceptable. There is no deity in the world with which you can you can share all these verses. Only in Krishna. And they are all explained in Bhagavatam. All of them, in detail. Every devotee has a certain relationship. And that is called Sadhana Siddhi. So, sorry, Sarupa Siddhi. Sarupa Siddhi means as you go on with devotional service, with your, with your good bhajan and sadhana, one day you will realize your Sarupa Siddhi. Sarupa Siddhi means you definitely realize that I have some relation with Krishna. It may be weak, it doesn't matter. But if you engage in devotional service, that relationship or that bond will become stronger and stronger, especially by hearing Bhagavad and this is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explains. That if you realize that you are, you are a friend of Krishna, then you should take the shelter of friends of Krishna, like the Gopas, Arjun, Vibhishan. Take their shelter. If you think that you are like the parent of Krishna, then take the shelter of Mother Yashoda, Nan Maharaj, King Dashran, Kaushalya. These are those who have parental love. And if you think that let me just become a servitor, then take shelter of Hanumanji. We give food shelter. We don't approach directly, we go through the devotee. This is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, way of Gopi Bhartu Kamalo Dasa Anudasa Anudasa. This is one of the verses which is coupled on in the altar before we start worshipping. We say, Naham Vipra, I am not a Brahmin, I am not a Kshatriya, I am not a Vaishya, nor I am Sudra. But I am the servitor of the servitor of servitor of the maintainer of the gopis. And that is Krishna. So in beautiful way, this verse is able to purify us. So one cannot say this pastime is less transcendental, this time, this pastime is more transcendental. No, we can't claim like that. Each pastime of Krishna is all transcendental. And devotees cannot actually live without Krishna. Prabhupada says, like fish cannot live without water. Fish is happy only when it's in the water. Once the fish is taken out of the water, you find it starts dying. It's not comfortable. 
So the devotee without Krishna's pastimes is unhappy. And we cannot live without Krishna because Krishna and his devotees are interlinked. Prabhupada defines what is devotional service. There is a devotee and there is a Krishna. And the transaction in between is called devotional service. So without these three, there is no transaction. You can't say, I'm doing bhakti. If you want to do bhakti, you have to become bhakta. And Krishna is called bhakta vatsana. Very dear to his devotees. What are you supposed to do? Devotional service. Like, you can hear so many pastimes of Krishna. Unlimited pastimes. Just like yesterday, we were discussing pastimes of Lord Jagannath. And amazing pastimes. Amazing pastimes that you can go on hearing and hearing. And if you're really genuine devotee of Lord Krishna, you cry. Beautiful pastimes. So as you hear the pastimes, there is a link between you and Krishna. So this link becomes stronger and stronger day by day by day. Why did you don't commit any offenses? You stay on the path, avoiding all the four kinds of offenses. Nama Bharat, don't commit offenses to the holy name. Vaishnava Prat, don't commit offenses towards, towards devotees. And then don't commit offenses in your seva, in your service, when you're serving with other devotees. And Dhamma Prat, don't commit offenses when you're visiting a holy place. At least these four offenses avoid. In the beginning, most of us commit. And then we get some lessons. And we learn, oh, we learn it the hard way in most cases that I should have not done this. In this way, one becomes purified by hearing about Krishna and avoiding offenses. So activities of this of devotees with Krishna are called Krishna Katha. What is Krishna Katha? It's not just Krishna, it's always with his devotees. You never hear a pastime without his devotees. For example, the birth of Krishna. It's not there just Krishna at birth. There is Devaki and there's Vasudev. The devotees are there. Then Krishna's killing so many demons with, with his uh, gopas and gopis. Like Kaliya when he appears. He, he's already with the, with the gopas. Then he jumps in the Jamuna. Very, very dangerous place where there was this huge serpent known as Kaliya. who was poisoning the water and so many cows and calves and boys after drinking the water had collapsed, died. And Krishna, he rejuvenated their life, gave them new life, and he himself jumped in. And everybody was scared. Everybody had attention, except one person. Do you know who is that? Anybody know? One person had attention. Who can it be? Yes. Only Balram, because he knows nothing can happen to Krishna. Like we, appear, we are almost close to Balram Jayanti, which is on Friday. So Balram always helps us, helps us give a lot of strength in the form of Nityana, in the form of Lakshman, in the form of Sesha. So if you hear any pastimes, you'll find Krishna is there, devotion is there, devotees are there. It can't be without this. And if you sum up all this in a simple words, it's called Krishna Katha. And all you have to do is to hear the pastimes over and over again and again. And that is what the whole Bhagavatam is about. So Dev Goswami is going to narrate. The first thing he's going to narrate is about Maharaj Parikshit. How Maharaj Parikshit is saved while in the womb. And then how the Pandavas, they renounce. This is the first part of the Bhagavata explanation, which Sutta Goswami is going to speak to the sages of Naivya Sharanya. And as you hear the pastimes, then beautiful prayers will appear now. In this very chapter, we find how Arjuna prepares to protect. No, no sorry. They, when they were already chasing Ashwatthama, and then Krishna says, Counteract this weapon known as the master. So even before using the weapon, he takes blessings of Krishna 
offers beautiful prayers. And then he forged the other Bhagavad As we go further, we find Maharani Kunti speaking beautiful prayers. Bishwa. And this with the whole Bhagavatam has philosophy, prayers, pastimes, devotees. The whole Bhagavatam is made in this way. So each chapter is very important. Each verse is important. So how can Bhagavatam be read in seven days? Impossible. <laughs> Even one pastime can take you seven days. One pastime. Shri Bhakti Siddhanta Mahajan's spiritual master, he spoke for three months on one verse. The opening was of Bhagavatam. Janmadiya Shoyataha. In Dhaka, which is now in Bangladesh, still there. In those days, it was a part of India. It took him three full months to explain one verse. So we can't say, oh, in a matter of terms, I know the Bhagavatam. No, you can't know. Just like Bhagavad Gita. You read it once, twice, even a hundred times. Still, you'll find always something missing. You had left some realization which you didn't get. And as you read, Bhagavad Gita becomes very dear to you. So what do you talk about Bhagavatam, which is one step higher? As you read Bhagavatam, you will actually enjoy it. Bhagavatam is so sweet because it is the beautiful story of the beautiful personality of God and Krishna. So in this purport, Sri Prabhupada says that we should never underestimate any pastime of Krishna. You may not like the pastime. Some other devotee will love, like the pastime. But the pastimes are so that everybody will like like, how many of us do not like to hear about Krishna's birth? Everybody likes how he appeared. Then, how he goes, how he's taken to Nan Maharaj, the pastimes he performs there. Then, he goes to kill Kamsa. After killing Kamsa, he stays in Mathura for some time. Then, he goes to establish Dwarka, pastimes in Dwarka. In this way, so many pastimes are there, the whole Bhagavatam. Tenth canto is the biggest canto in the whole twelve canto, biggest, because it's the pastimes of Krishna. And that is what we are going to hear. This is the first pastime being told to you, uh, being, I mean, being told to us, those who are reading Bhagavatam daily. So fortunate are the people who hear Bhagavatam daily, because that is the food for the soul. The soul is not happy if you are not hearing Bhagavatam. Daily, without fail, you must hear Bhagavatam. And respect Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam looks like a book, but it is none different from Krishna. It is Krishna, same, same Krishna. Like the first two cantos, with the feet of Krishna. The third is the, th uh, the knees, foot, as you go upwards, the, the waist and so on. Did you read the tenth canto? Is the face, 11th and 12th, is like the crown or the turban of Krishna. In this way, we can hear the Bhagavatam, endless pastimes in the starting project, which are so dear to the Vaishnavam, Priyamnam. Vaishnavam means devotees of Krishna. Some people say, why not to others? Because others have not surrendered to Krishna. Whereas Bhagavatam, I mean, Vaishnavas means those who have surrendered to Krishna. When you surrender to Krishna, that's when you actually relish Bhagavatam. And especially in the age of Kali Yuga, if you are in darkness, this is the only book which will give you light. Otherwise, you stay in darkness and you remain miserable. But if you want to come out of miserable, shoka moha bhaya, shoka means uh, lamentation, shoka moha, illusion, bhaya means fear. If you want to escape these three things, then read Bhagavatam. There is no shoka moya, moha, paya. You at once become uplifted and come to the platform of transcendental loving service of Krishna. That is the guarantee given by the author of Bhagavatam, given by Sri Prabhupada with so many lectures. They say, what is the life of a devotee? La life of a devotee, devotee is called Bhagavat. And Srimad Bhagavatam is also Bhagavatam. So there is a relationship. That one who hears Bhagavatam daily, 
he becomes enriched. Otherwise, the world, what is the world like? The world daily is giving you troubles, different, different anxieties. You take any man from your, from your, maybe one of your acquaintances, ask him, did you have, do you have any problem? I can guarantee you no one will say, no, I have no problem. Everyone has problems. And sometimes the problems become too much. We become so frustrated that we feel like, ah, I wish it. I wish I never took birth here. At that time, the Bhagavan shines. He gives you hope. And no, give up your shoka mohabaya, come to me. Krishna is with his open hands, inviting all of us to come here. That's why the first point here is that Krishna is so kind to all of us that he comes here personally in a human form, performs pastime. Because had he come in some other form, we would have not liked it. We would have said, oh, who is this? But he, for among this human, especially two incarnations, Lord Ramachandra, Lord Krishna, very, very powerful. When you hear the pastime of both the lords, then life becomes not just easy, it becomes sublime. So our daily duty is to hear Bhagavad. I would tell, advise you, don't take your breakfast if you're not <laughs> Heard Bhagavatam. Read Bhagavatam daily. And if you think after breakfast, you read, it's okay. I mean, whatever suits you like that. There's no fixed time as such. But the more the morning time is always good. Finish your job up, hear the Bhagavatam, and then start your day. And you'll find your day will become special because you cannot forget Krishna on that day. If you heard Bhagavatam, you cannot forget Krishna. That is for sure. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Hare Krishna, thank you very much, Prabhuji. Mm -hmm. We uh, hear the Bhagavatam and then we go to sleep. So we are ending the day with Bhagavatam. So doing it's everything. okay for at least it's helping the working people, people who have time. So still you are hearing Bhagavatam, so it's okay. So even hearing Bhagavatam before you sleep is good. You'll have sweet dreams of Krishna. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Are there any questions or comments? Yes, Sandhya Mataji, kindly unmute and ask your question. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, all devotees. Prabhuji, how uh, you said we should take shelter of, say, Pandavas or uh, Hanu. How do we take shelter of them? Hare Krishna. Okay, good question. For example, as you go, if you, if you are already in devotional service and you are, you are progressing daily, then you come to understand your sarupa. Sarupa means your constitutional position. Chitra Mahabha says, Jivir Sarupahaya, Krishna, Nityadar. We are all servitors of Krishna. But even among the servitors, there are different classes. One can be a general, just a servitor. One can be actual servitor, just like it is called. When someone becomes initiated, it's called Dasa. That is officially is a servant of Krishna. The guy called Rukma Dasa. So it means I'm officially engaged in service of Krishna. Then as your devotional service becomes richer, sweeter, then you realize that you have some strong relation with Krishna in a particular angle. Five angles are given. Five and seven others. At least we discuss five. That one can be just Shanta. Shanta means a peaceful person that you like to perform devotional service. Those are called Shantas. Most of us actually come into that category. Then there are Dasas. Dasas means like Hanuman. He served Lord Ramachandra and many, many other servitors. Like all the monkeys, like Sri, Jambu, and they all served Lord Ramachandra. In Krishna's times, there were so many servants who served Krishna so nicely. So we take shelter of, in that bhava, we hear about them, especially hear about them and take their shelter. And then when it comes to friendship, Krishna had loving friends like Subal and Madhubandal and all those, the gopis, all these are friends of Krishna and whom Krishna would not forget them. Even when he went to Dwarka, in his sleep, you would be speaking their names. So that is the relationship between Krishna and his friends. So we have to take shelter of those devotees. 
And if you want a parental affection, like in Gujarat, they have Pushti Marg uh, under Shibad Walbachan. He teaches the worship of Lala. Lala means baby Krishna. So if you have that Vatsali about, you have to take shelter of Nan Maharaj and Vishwa. Because that is the best, best way they love Krishna. So we cannot become parents. We have to become, we have to be trained by them how to love Krishna. And then when you talk of love, you want to become a lover. Or if you think that you are a lover of Krishna, then follow the footsteps of the gopis. Gopis, Lalita, Vishaka, Radharani, like that. And if you think you want to love as a husband, take the shadow of Rukmini. Excellent. So in this way, there are different grasses. That is what I was trying to explain. So Pandavas are friends and devotees of Krishna. So if you become a uh, follower of Pandavas, you become like Pandavas, like Kunti. There's one specific quality which Pandavas have. I don't know if you know that. Anybody likes to try? Let me explain the quality of Pandavas. Pandavas are so kind that if they found anyone weaker, they'll take his side or her side. So much compassion. Pandavas are very, very special people. And Pandavas are still worshipped in India. In many temples, they keep five Pandavas, especially in Orissa, Bengal. Why? Because the mother Kunti had taught them they try to see the difficulties of others. Don't look into your difficulties. Help them. Share their pain. And that's why there's a saying that if you cannot help someone, in good times, help him in difficult times. You can share bad times. In a, especially, you have to be very compassionate, friendly to those people who are going through difficulties. That's why Prahlad Maharaj says, Vaishnava para dukha dukhi. When someone is suffering, try to understand what pain is going through, he or she, and really try to relieve that pain by taking part into it. Okay, Mataji? What is the name? Sandhya Mata. Uh, so, uh, you said there are some temples like with uh, Pandava. So, do people pray to Pandavas? No, no, I can't hear you, Mata. Uh, you Can said you there, are, your... there are some temples with the four Pandavas. Yes, yes. So, Not four, five Pandavas. Yeah, they are there. So, people pray to the Pandavas then? Yes, yes, yes. People pray to the Pandavas. They are not ordinary devotees. They are very special devotees. Okay, Prabhuji. Thank you. I've understood that now. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are there any other questions? Prabhuji, I have a question entirely on the different spectrum, uh, Sandhya Mataji. Prabhuji, there are people uh, who enjoy uh, when other people suffer. Mm. So uh, when I saw that, I thought of Mrigari the hunter uh, because he enjoyed when the animals were, um, uh, were, suffering. were suffering. So Prabhuji, why do they, is it because they are envious of those people? Why do they enjoy when others are really down or in difficulty or if they've been robbed or etc.? Yeah, there are two reasons. First of all, they are blind of their constitutional position. They have no knowledge of the constitution. And second is, they are full of envy. They do not know pain of others. Like us also. Sometimes you, some person can come to you with a lot of problems, but you do not understand the person. You say, oh, go away. Or you say, I don't have time. You try to skip. Already committed an offense. Someone has came to you asking for help. Help that person. If you can't help that person, at least speak some nice, soft words. So his heart becomes softer. So it's very difficult. Uh, there is a saying, even in our Indian language, that when a person is hurt, he knows the pain. Others get it. But when you get the same pain, then you will know. So when someone is undergoing trouble or pain, that that is the person who's actually suffering. So at that time, if you can help that person, you are the fortunate. 
And you cannot help that person unless you yourself are not going through that problem. If you're not an experienced person, it's very difficult to sort out that problem. It's not that your knowledge and you can help the person. At that time, knowledge doesn't work. What works is how much sympathy you have for that person, how much compassion. Let's say a person has committed some heinous or grievous offense. Then we should know, oh, no doubt he's at fault, but I can still help this person that he should not be a pressure consciousness. So if you understand the problem like that, then you are a mature devotee. And that's what we are all trying to do, trying to become at least a mature person. Which is not easy. It requires a lot of tolerance. It requires a lot of performance. And we have to go down to Krishna, to the holy name, over and over and again to reach to that position. And many times people will point fingers at you. Oh, we are useless. We are, you don't know anything. Or you do not know this. You do not know. We just bear it, let it go. We keep our heart clean. Not just clean, pure and in good Krishna conscious faith by valuing each service we do, especially chanting Hare Krishna. Because when you are chanting Hare Krishna, the amrita, amrita or the nectar is actually flowing from your mouth to the ear, to the heart. You do not know this, that you're actually drinking nectar. This is the holy man. What to talk of other sources? Imagine you're taking darshan of Krishna. Simply by looking at your eyes of Krishna, all your lusty thoughts will go. But people don't, don't know the secrets. As you engage in devotional service, you'll find that a pure devotee is very happy to see other devotees engage in devotional service. This is a sign of someone who's very advanced. Like somebody sent a question, I believe you sent a question, and I tried to answer. Let me see if I can get it. He asked, Who is a pure devotee? And it's difficult to answer in one word. <clears throat> so I gave him the list. If the question is, who are pure devotees? What are their characteristics? Anywhere mentioned by Sri Prabhupada. So I answered it. Several characteristics. Number one, he's always in love with Krishna. Number two, always feel ecstasy in serving Krishna. Number three, Appreciates all devotees who serve Krishna. Four, attached to Krishna by Krishna consciousness, always chants Hare Krishna. He is prideless, free from false ego, always ready to serve, discusses Shiva Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita with devotees, loves hearing about Krishna, has strong faith in Krishna consciousness of process, has a very soft, compassionate heart. He follows the footsteps of great devotees like the gopis. He, provide, he can provide others with full knowledge about Krishna. He's very merciful. He cannot be defeated by non-devotees. He values time. And he accepts what is favorable for Krishna. And the last is, such a person should be accepted as our Sucha Master. So in just about 15 points, you'll find so many qualities of a pure devotee. So you have to seek such a devotee who is by nature very, very pure. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Um, besides not knowing the constitutional position and besides being envious, is it because they are hard-hearted, Prabhuji? Yeah, but why do you become hard-hearted? It's because you do not know the difference between body and soul. When you do not know body and soul, you don't see body and soul of others. That's why you give pain to others. Why we don't use harsh, harsh language so, so that we don't hurt anyone. We hurt anyone simply by using harsh language. Yes, you can use harsh language provided you are an authority, but not otherwise. Sometimes an authority may use harsh words to correct the situation. Otherwise, we should not use any hard, word, hard uh, words. No way we should use our body in a hard way. No, our mind should be ill of anyone. That is very, very special. Takes time, but not impossible. It is possible. When you talk about Tongi of Mirgari, he used to take used to take pleasure in killing animals, half dead. So first thing Narad says, why are you killing them uh, half? Why don't you kill them once so that they don't suffer? 
And the immediate answer was, I feel happy when they suffer. So he found the, how cruel he is. That's why now when he bestowed his mercy with him, and he became a pure devotee by chanting Hare Krishna. And he began to perform some miracles. Otherwise, he will not accept because when Narmo was living, when, when he saw some animal which was being cut half, he touched that animal. That animal revived it, ran away. Some bird whose wing was cut, Narmo, when he touched it, he got a new wing, he flew away. When he saw this miracle happening in front of him, then he accepted. He said, whatever you say cannot be wrong. And that is the miracle Sri Prabhupada has done all over the world. That you simply chant Hare Krishna, and people are chanting Hare Krishna and becoming happy. What bigger miracle can be more, more than this? That you simply hear these words. After all, Muhammad means simply words, Sabda. But why? That by repeating them, repeating them, you become purified. There must be some secret. Automatically, the secret becomes revealed if you chant Hare Krishna. Okay. Thank you very much, Prabhuji. Uh, are there any other questions or comments? If there are no more questions Hare or comments, Hare I can. Yes, Hare Peter Krishna. Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Prabhu. Hare Krishna to all the devotees. Um, yes, Peter Prabhu. I, I may, can, can I please take us uh, out of topic a bit? I have a question from the Bhagavad Gita. I don't know. Yeah, I can okay. Ask. Uh, I, I was reading something about uh, the, <clears throat> the expansion of Mahavishnu, Garbo Dakasha, and Shiro Dakasha. And something captivated me about Shiro Dakasha, Vishnu. Uh, yeah. it, uh, but, uh, Prabhupada says that he enters into every atom. So I was just wondering, is it personally that uh, if I look around that I can see <coughs> millions or trillions of Vishnus everywhere because there are millions and trillions of Vishnus in every atom. So should I yes, see well, four own Vishnus in every atom? Yes, Sri Prabhupada says that is in every matter, in every spirit. Shirodaksha is, is represented in a human being as Paramatma. Paramatma is same as Shirodaksha Vishnu. That is there in every atom. You may have seen a picture of, uh, if you go to Google and try to look for a picture of uh, Mahavishnu or Vishnu, then you find that actually Vishnu is in everything, in every matter. Even it's a stone, Vishnu is there inside. You may have seen the picture, 400 Vishnu, beautiful. So in this way, what Prabhupada is saying that he enters Parmanu, Anu, Parmanu. Anu means uh, atom. Parmanu means electron. Even can enter into that one. So, uh, if we have that vision, then we are fortunate. Is it clear, Peter? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you. Like I can show you the picture. I have it on my phone here. Like this is Vishnu. You can see this picture. This is Vishnu. Yes. Then you may see that they may they are also drawings in which is there in an atom. Is there in each atom? I don't know. Yeah, I found it. Can you see that one? Are you yes, both? yes. It's a, no, yeah, this... it's a, it's a bit. Yeah. The the next the, the slide has moved there. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. It just went on. Just went. Vishnu in every atom. Yes. So you should keep, keep this picture in the mind that whether it is matter or it is spirit, Krishna is everywhere. That's why he said that he is in he, he, Krishna is everything. Sri Prabhupada gives the example that uh, a, a good electrician can make electricity to heat things up. And the same electrician knows how to cool things down. For example, a fridge uses electricity to cool things down. Owen uses electricity to heat up the things. Now, who can do this an electrician? But there's no better electrician than Krishna. He knows how to make even matter into spirit. He knows it. Even matter can be made in spirit. It is possible. It is only possible by Krishna, not by us. Scientists can't do that. Krishna is a supreme scientist. Okay, Peter. 
Yes, Ruby. Yes, Ruby. Thank you. Ruby. Hare Krishna. Uh, Sandhya Mataji, do you have a question or is it the hand is raised from before? Uh, Prabhuji, uh, if you had to describe Lord Krishna without using the word Supreme Personality of Godhead, how would you describe if someone said, who is Krishna, but don't use these four words, what would you say? <laughs> Krishna is all attractive, that's all. If you don't use the word Supreme, use the word all attractive. Who is more attractive than Krishna? No one. And who is more pleasing than Rama? No one. And who can take all the obstacles? Only Lord Hari. It says like, three names are the three names in the Muhammad. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. The very word Krishna is very attractive. The word itself is attractive. What to talk of the form of the Krishna is so attractive. Is it okay? Yes, Prabhuji, thank you. If you don't do use the word supreme, then you say absolute truth. Absolute truth is Krishna. You can use that language also. Or thank if you don't want a bit of Sanskrit, then you speak the word 7 7 in Bhagavad Gita. Mata Paratra Nanya Kinti Dhananjaya. There is no superior truth than me, Krishna says. Use that word. Always carry Bhagavad Gita with your small one. Open the verse and explain to them. Nothing is beyond Krishna. I'll give you three examples. Is it okay? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I, I can see the same challenge whenever I'm talking of Krishna, like Sandhya Mataji. Uh, and it's difficult to explain the same to people of different faith and other, even in, in Hinduism, uh, of different faith um, and different sects. And uh, to say that Krishna is a supreme personality of Godhead, they call us fanatics. So I, I like this, that Krishna is all attractive. Um, and it's true. And I can say, go to the temple and see how attractive my Krishna is. So... Thank you very much for that question because it has helped me as well, Sandhya Mataji. Yeah, when, when, first of all, it's very difficult to explain to people who think God has no form. Mm -hmm. So you can't explain Krishna to them. Very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. because some people think that God can never come on the planet. But why he can't come? Prabhupada challenges in a lecture. Why he can't come? You say he can't come. It is your, your experience. But why he can't come? He can come. So it's not that he can't come. And it's written he comes. Yada, yada, in Dharmashya. 4 7 in Bhagavad Gita. He says, I come. Whenever, wherever there's a decline in religious principles, I appear. In every millennium, he says. Not only once. Wherever there is a necessity, wherever there is a disturbance of religious principles, I appear. Now, if a person doesn't want to appear, he's like an owl. You know what an owl is? A bird. You can only see at night, cannot see the bright sun. His eyes are like that. Owl is called Ulu. Ulu means foolish. <laughs> In Hindi, they say Ulu Kabata, which the grossest kind of a foolish man. <laughs> so Ulu is an owl. Even when the light is there, the eyes are open, but you can't see. So for them to explain Krishna, then he just said God, or he said Bhagwan, or he said Ishwar, or Paramatma, whatever you want. Punjabis, they say Rab. In the Urdu, they say Khuda. Whatever they say. At least he's there, Mr. X. Absolute, but Mr. X. But who is that Mr. X? Is here in the Bhagavatam. Or Bhagavad He's Krishna. We have to see whom are we talking. With whom are we talking. Mm -hmm. Rabbi gives the example of Saraswati, a three-year-old daughter of a, a devotee couple, who went to the school with a picture of Krishna. And tells everyone, do you know this is God? This is God, he said. <laughs> she said. And when Prabhupada heard this, heard this, Prabhupada is very pleased. He says, see, at the age of three, she's preaching already. Now, this can happen only in devotees' children. Is it okay? Yes, Prabhupada, thank you so much. I see that we have exhausted our time. I hand over to Pat Prabhu. Pat Prabhu, kindly take over. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. 
Hari. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your nice and wonderful class. It's really interesting. And nothing to say more about Rukma Prabhu's class. We simply thanks Rukma Prabhuji and also thanks all the devotees who joined here. I request everyone, please unmute yourself and chant Hare Krishna Mantra for glorification of His Gracious Rukma Prabhuji. Please join. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Vancha Kalpa, Vancha Kripa, Shindhu, Vaya Vaya. Vancha Kalpa, Vaya Vaya. Shri Lakshmapad ki jai. His Grash Rukma Prabhu ki jai. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thanks everyone for class. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, everybody.